hello YouTube and good morning it's a bloody cold day here in Japan oh shit it's the police I better not, I better not do that oh dear I did it <laughs> they didn't give a fuck they turned off Woo! lucky me okay <laughs> back to the video so um, as I was just saying it's bloody cold I guess anyone living in the northern hemisphere right now is cold so because of that I'm not particularly in a mood for going on long bike trips like I did the other week like all the places that I love to go all the mountain roads they're all sn covered in snow and stuff now so not particularly fun but obviously I want to keep the channel alive and keep making uploading videos so what can I do I thought ah. So I'm going to introduce a new little segment called Story Time. So basically, a load of my friends here in Japan, every time we go out for a drink or whatever and I tell some old story like, oh, you know, when I was young I did this and this happened to me and they basically tell me you should write a book. <laughs> and most of the time they think I'm talking shit and they don't believe me anyway. But yeah, obviously I've lived in this country now for... 12 years lived in Australia before that did some backpacking around Asia like um, three months in Thailand and Malaysia places like that so I've got myself into a fair few adventures over the years and uh, yeah today today's story is from England back when I was in my early 20s so I lived in this uh, it w used to be a pub and it was converted not very well but it was converted into like um just rooms uh, you, you wouldn't really call it apartments because they were basically just bedrooms so we all had the same kitchen and same bathroom same shower and all that so the other people who lived there i don't know if i could call them hell's angels or not but i think they were like they all had cuts they all rode bikes they're all a bit dodgy so whether they were officially Hells Angels or not, I don't know, but at the very least you could call them a motorbike gang, motorcycle gang. And then there was me. So I was kind of the odd one out. Uh, obviously I rode bikes back then anyway, so they sort of accepted me even though I was riding a, a sports bike and they are all on Harleys and custom choppers and whatever. But um, yeah, living in that house was just insane. There was loads of drugs, loads of alcohol, loads of loose women and uh, basically you just didn't sleep very much <laughs> and uh, the local pub there was two pubs in this little village and the one closest to us used to have a rule uh, for the lock-in you know like in England uh, I don't know what it is now but the last uh, last hours you're allowed to drink like time time at the bar I think was like 11 30 maybe back in those days but obviously um, dodgy little country pubs they don't really care about the law you know so they have a lock-in so they stay open till whenever till all the customers have finished drinking basically so our pub had this rule where if you were still drinking when the sun came up they would make you a free fry up English breakfast for free that was the rule so on this one particular night we were all in there and uh, except two of the guys who had were on holiday on courtesy of Her Majesty <laughs> so those guys went there and um, we were drinking and drinking and drinking and then we were talking about this car that uh, had appeared in our in our car park because the house used to be a pub it had a huge car park and sometimes people would just mistakenly park there thinking it still was a pub or like it was a public car park or something so on this one particular drunken night we were talking about this Vauxhall Cavalier that had been we assumed abandoned because it had been there for about two or three weeks no like note on it or anything it was locked so we figured someone had just abandoned it so me having my drunken courage I decided you know what if it's been dumped I'll get rid of it because it's a bit of an eyesore we don't want this shitty old Vauxhall in our car park so about 5.30 in the morning when I was all tanked up after a probably a 12 hour session of drinking I went back into my room picked up some tools smashed the window then broke the ignition column with a screwdriver and a hammer 
hot-wired it and then drove it out of the village into this little country lane where there was like a lay-by parking area thing and I just left it there so I figured you know if there's some other dodgy person out there they might want to take it or whatever you know all we all we were concerned about was it was somebody had dumped it in our car park and we didn't want it anymore so yeah all good came home like an hour later maybe had to walk quite a way home then uh john the guy who was kind of like the leader i said hey john i got rid of that car and he's ah oh, thanks mate that's really good then went to sleep all good then a couple of weeks later the fella who i mentioned was on a long holiday courtesy of her majesty got out and came back home and uh we we're just same thing back in the pub celebrating his his release back to freedom and um he said oh yeah by the way does anyone know where that Vauxhall Cavalier's gone and John the like the leader looked at me I looked at him and we're like oh fuck because this guy we'll call him Big Tony was fucking huge he was about two meters tall don't know how many kilos but probably like 150 kilos something like that. he's a big motherfucker like huge muscles and obviously he's has violent tendencies hence why he was uh, incarcerated for a little while and i just did not want to tell him the truth <laughs> yeah mate i uh <laughs> i hotwired it and then abandoned it so i didn't tell him and then I figured, like, I, I sort of whispered to John, uh, I'll go back tonight and I'll, um, I'll go and get it, I'll bring it, bring it back. Because it was a couple of weeks, I reckon, and I, I used to ride, ride past that place where I'd abandoned it, so I knew it was still there. So that very next morning, woke up early and uh, went to go and retrieve the car with a, a battery jumper pack and some other tools just in case it wouldn't start. And when I got there, it had been set on fire. <laughs> Somebody had fucking torched it. <laughs> so I was, I went back and I told John, mate, I just went to go and get it, but it's, it's fucking, it's been burnt out. Someone set fire to it. And he's like, oh my god, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna tell Big Tony? And I was like, oh, I don't know, but pretty much everyone in the house knows that I did it. So at some point, someone's gonna like blab, and then I'm gonna get the shit kicked out of me. So I figured, right, well, we'll wait till we get into the pub tonight, wait till he's a bit tanked up and then I'll tell him. So anyway, I brought up the subject, just like... Uh, you know that Vauxhall Cavalier? And then Big Tony goes, yeah, I bought that for my girlfriend because she's learning how to drive. I'm gutted that it's not here. I was like, um, well, what happened was, I told him the story. <laughs> and it just went silent in the pub like everybody looked at me because pretty much at this point everyone in the whole fucking village knew that it was me <laughs> and it just went quiet like you could hear a pin drop everyone stared at me everyone stared at Big Tony just waiting for, <laughs> for me to get a glass mashed in my face or something and he just fucking started laughing he just pissed himself laughing and said you know something like you silly bastard or whatever and then he, <laughs> he goes well you better fucking the, the drinks better be on you tonight then so basically I ended up buying him copious amounts of <laughs> beer and whiskey that night and then it was forgotten but I was shitting myself for a long 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 time when, when I knew that it was Big Tony's car and it was me that had fucking dumped it I was so shitting myself I felt for sure that he was gonna fucking at least beat me up at the very least beat me up these fuckers they were all mental obviously it, I sort of fitted in quite well but they were fucking mental like I'd come home sometimes at, late at night and they'd shoot a fucking crossbow out me, at me from the um like the top the the loft like the loft in the building had those like windows that open at angles like swiss cottages or whatever they used to fucking shoot crossbows like they didn't have tips on them so it was just like firing a stick at me but they used to fire fucking crossbows at me when i was parking my bike like they were all completely insane it was actually the the funnest time i've ever had to be honest like living in that house was fucking so much fun it was crazy but fun but yeah so that's the time I nearly got killed by Hell's Angels. Slightly dramatised, obviously.